NCLEX Daily Practice Part 4 61. Lactulose, Cronulac, has been prescribed for a client with advanced liver disease. Which of the following assessments would the nurse use to evaluate the effectiveness of this treatment? A. An increase in appetite. B. A decrease in fluid retention. C. A decrease in lethargy. D. A reduction in jaundice. 61. C. A decrease in lethargy. Lactulose produces an acid environment in the bowel and traps ammonia in the gut. The laxative effect then aids in removing the ammonia from the body. This decreases the effects of hepatic encephalopathy, including lethargy and confusion. 62. The nurse is teaching a class on HIV prevention. Which of the following should be emphasized as increasing risk? A. Donating blood. B. Using public bathrooms. 62. C. Unprotected sex. Because HIV is spread through exposure to bodily fluids, unprotected intercourse and shared drug paraphernalia remain the highest risks for infection. 63. While interviewing a new admission, the nurse notices that the client is shifting positions, wringing her hands, and avoiding eye contact. It is important for the nurse to a. Ask the client what she is feeling. b. Assess the client for auditory hallucination. c. Recognize the behavior as a side effect of medication. d. Refocus the discussion on a less anxiety-provoking topic. 63a. Ask the client what she is feeling. The initial step in anxiety intervention is observing, identifying, and assessing anxiety. The nurse should seek client validation of the accuracy of nursing assessments and avoid drawing conclusions based on limited data. In the situation above, the client may simply need to use the restroom but be reluctant to communicate her need. 64. A young adult seeks treatment in an outpatient mental health center. The client tells the nurse he is a government official being followed by spies. On further questioning, he reveals that his warnings must be heeded to prevent nuclear war. What is the most therapeutic approach by the nurse? A. Listen quietly without comment. B. Ask for further information on the spies. C. Confront the client's delusion. D. Contact the government agency. 64a. Listen quietly without comment. The client's comments demonstrate grandiose ideas. The most therapeutic response is to listen but avoid being incorporated into the client's delusional system. 65. The nurse is assessing a 17-year-old female client with bulimia. Which of the following laboratory reports would the nurse anticipate? a. Increased serum glucose. B. Decreased albumin. C. Decreased potassium. D. Increased sodium retention. 65 C. Decreased potassium. In bulimia, loss of electrolytes can occur in addition to other findings of starvation and dehydration. 66. A client, recovering from alcoholism, asks the nurse, What can I do when I start recognizing relapse triggers within myself? How might the nurse best respond? A. When you have the impulse to stop in a bar, contact a sober friend and talk with him. B. Go to an AA meeting when you feel the urge to drink. C. It is important to exercise daily and get involved in activities that will cause you not to. Think about drug use. D. Let's talk about possible options you have when you recognize relapse triggers in. Yourself. 66D. This option encourages the process of self-evaluation and problem-solving while avoiding telling the client what to do. Encouraging the client to brainstorm about response options validates the nurse's belief in the client's personal competency and reinforces a coping strategy that will be needed when the nurse may not be available to offer solutions. 67. Therapeutic nurse-client interaction occurs when the nurse a. Assists the client to clarify the meaning of what the client has said. b. Interprets the client's covert communication. c. Praises the client for appropriate feelings and behavior. d. Advises the client on ways to resolve problems. 
67A assists the client to clarify the meaning of what the client has said. Clarification is a facilitating slash therapeutic communication strategy. Interpretation, changing the focus slash subject, giving approval, and advising are non-therapeutic slash barriers to communication. 68. Which nursing intervention will be most effective in helping a withdrawn client to develop relationship skills? A. Offer the client frequent opportunities to interact with one person. B. Provide the client with frequent opportunities to interact with other clients. C. Assist the client to analyze the meaning of the withdrawn behavior. D. Discuss with the client the focus that other clients have similar problems. 68A. Offer the client frequent opportunities to interact with one person. The withdrawn client is uncomfortable in social interaction. The nurse-client relationship is a corrective relationship in which the client learns both tolerance and skills for relationships. 69. An important goal in the development of a therapeutic inpatient milieu is to a. Provide a business-like atmosphere where clients can work on individual goals. b. Provide a group form in which clients decide on unit rules, regulations, and policies. C. Provide a testing ground for new patterns of behavior while the client takes responsibility for his or her own actions. D. Discourage expressions of anger because they can be disruptive to other clients. 69C. Provide a testing ground for new patterns of behavior while the client takes responsibility for his or her own actions. A therapeutic milieu is purposeful and planned to provide safety and a testing ground for new patterns of behavior. 70. A client with paranoid delusions stares at the nurse over a period of several days. The client suddenly walks up to the nurse and shouts you think you're so perfect and pure and good. An appropriate response for the nurse is. Eh, is that why you've been staring at me? B. You seem to be in a really bad mood. C. Perfect? I don't quite understand. D. You seem angry right now. 70D, you seem angry right now. The nurse recognizes the underlying emotion with a matter-of-fact attitude, but avoids telling the clients how they feel. 71, a client who is a former actress enters the day room wearing a sheer nightgown, high heels, numerous bracelets, bright red lipstick, and heavily rouged cheeks. Which nursing action is the best in response to the client's attire? A, uh, gently remind her that she is no longer on stage. B. Directly assist client to her room for appropriate apparel. C. Quietly point out to her the dress of other clients on the unit. D. Tactfully explain appropriate clothing for the hospital. 71B. Directly assist client to her room for appropriate apparel. It assists the client to maintain self-esteem while modifying behavior. 72. When teaching suicide prevention to the parents of a 15-year-old who recently attempted suicide, the nurse describes the following behavioral cue as indicating a need for intervention. A. Angry outbursts at significant others. B. Fear of being left alone. C. Giving away valued personal items. D. Experiencing the loss of a boyfriend. 72. C. Giving away valued personal items. 80% of all potential suicide victims give some type of indication that self-destructiveness should be addressed. These clues might lead one to suspect that a client is having suicidal thoughts or is developing a plan. 73. Which statement made by a client indicates to the nurse that the client may have a thought disorder? A. I'm so angry about this. Wait until my partner hears about this. B. I'm a little confused. What time is it? C. I can't find my mesmer shoes. Have you seen them? D. I'm fine. It's my daughter who has the problem. 73. C. I can't find my mesmer shoes. Have you seen them? A neologism is a new word self invented by a person and not readily understood by another. Using neologisms is often associated with a thought disorder. 74. In a psychiatric setting, the nurse limits touch or contact used with clients to handshaking because 
Uh, some clients misconstrue hugs as an invitation to sexual advances. B. Handshaking keeps the gesture on a professional level. C. Refusal to touch a client denotes lack of concern. D. Inappropriate touch often results in charges of assault and battery. 74A. Some clients misconstrue hugs as an invitation to sexual advances. Touch denotes positive feelings for another person. The client may interpret hugging and holding hands as sexual advances. 75. A client with anorexia is hospitalized on a medical unit due to electrolyte imbalance and cardiac dysrhythmias. Additional assessment findings that the nurse would expect to observe are a. Brittle hair, lanugo, amenorrhea. b. Diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, dental erosion. c. Hyperthermia, tachycardia, increased metabolic rate. d. Excessive anxiety about symptoms. 75a. Brittle hair, lanugo, amenorrhea. Physical findings associated with anorexia also include reduced metabolic rate and lower vital signs. 76. Which intervention best demonstrates the nurse's sensitivity to a 16-year-old's appropriate need for autonomy? a. Alertness for feelings regarding body image. b. Allows young siblings to visit. c. Provides opportunity to discuss concerns without presence of parents. d. Explores his feelings of resentment to identify causes. 76C. Provides opportunity to discuss concerns without presence of parents. This intervention provides the teen with the opportunity to have control and encourages decision-making. 77. The nurse's primary intervention for a client who is experiencing a panic attack is to a. Develop a trusting relationship. B. Assist the client to describe his experience in detail. C. Maintain safety for the client. D. Teach the client to control his or her own behavior. 77. C. Maintain safety for the client. Clients who display signs of severe anxiety need to be supervised closely until the anxiety is decreased because they may harm themselves or others. 78. A client was admitted to the eating disorder unit with bulimia nervosa. The nurse assessing for a history of complications of this disorder expects a. Respiratory distress, dyspnea. b. Bacterial gastrointestinal infections, overhydration. c. Metabolic acidosis, constricted colon. d. Dental erosion, parotid gland enlargement. 78d. Dental erosion, parotid gland enlargement. Dental erosion and parotid gland enlargement due to purging are common complications of binge eating followed by self-induced vomiting. 79. Which of the following times is a depressed client at highest risk for attempting suicide? a. Immediately after admission, during 1-to-1 -one observation. b. 7-14 to 14 days after initiation of antidepressant medication and psychotherapy. c. Following an angry outburst with family. D. When the client is removed from the security room. 79b. 7 to 14 days after initiation of antidepressant medication and psychotherapy. As the depression lessens, the depressed client acquires energy to follow the plan. 80. A client is admitted to a psychiatric unit with delusions. What findings could the nurse observe that would be consistent with delusional thought patterns? A. Flight of ideas and hyperactivity. B. Suspiciousness and resistance to therapy. C. Anorexia and hopelessness. D. Panic and multiple physical complaints. 80. B. Suspiciousness and resistance to therapy. Clinical features of paranoid delusional disorder include extreme suspiciousness, jealousy, distrust, and a belief that others intend to invoke harm.